Hey students, this is a video on section 15.2. Uh, 15.2 is actually about double integrals over general regions. Uh, but first, we're going to be learning about sketching regions of integration. So here, we're not just going to be dealing with rectangles anymore. 15.1 was only double integrals over rectangles. Uh, so here, we're going to learn how to deal with different shapes besides rectangles. And they can be quite complicated, but we can still do the integral. Okay, so example. Sketch the described region. Okay, sketch the described region of integration. Okay, and uh, we're going to do a couple of these just to make sure you know how to graph this stuff. Now, you can use a graphing calculator. That could be very helpful here. Um, but since I don't require you to get a graphing calculator, I'll show you how to sketch it by hand. Okay, so for number one, they tell us that zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to five. Okay, and then they tell us that 3x squared is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 3x plus 60. Okay, so um, 0 is less than, or, less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 5, and then 3x squared is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 3x plus 60. So if you're not using a graphing calculator, you do have to remember the basics of graphing. However, it is multiple choice on your homework, so you won't find it too bad because there's only four options. It's not like you're going to have to sketch this by hand and turn it in or anything. Okay, but let's just start with the easy part, which is um, x. So we know x goes from 0 to 5. So that means um, when we draw our x-axis, we can just have our x-axis uh, go from 0 to 5, and that's good enough. The axes don't have to have the same um, spacing, so you can take that, you can take advantage of that. So on the x-axis, we'll just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So x is going from 0, which is right here, to 5, which is right there. Okay, that's in red on our x-axis. And then on our y-axis, things get a little bit trickier. So how do we deal with all this? Well, um, it's saying that y is between these two functions, but you're going to have to graph each of these functions. And the hard one to graph is 3x plus 60, mostly because 60 is such a big number. So what we're going to do is instead of counting by ones on the y-axis, we're going to have to count so that we can get all the way up to 60. Because if you think about it, um, there's really two graphs that we have to graph here. The first is y equals 3x squared. And then the other one is y equals 3x plus 60. So um, the first one's just a parabola. That won't be too bad. But the second one is actually a diagonal line. This is in the form y equals mx plus b, okay, where m is the slope, so here m is 3, and b is the y-intercept, so the y-intercept is actually going to be 60. So what we do is, on the y-axis, instead of counting in 1s, we have to count so that we can get all the way up to 60, because that's what the y-intercept is. So for example, I could count in 20s, so here's 20. 40, 60, 80, okay? And then we know that our graph has to go, um, it actually has to go through 60. So it has to go through there. And if you want to, you can actually to do uh, two different colors here, although I don't think most people find that necessary. Okay, and then uh, the rise over the run 
uh, is going to be 3 over 1 because the slope m is 3. However, because we're counting by 20s on the y-axis, our line is going to look a lot more horizontal. It's almost going to be horizontal. So this line is going to be not very steep. And remember, we're just doing a sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect. Notice I'm not even bothering to do the rise over the run. I'm just getting a rough sketch. Since it's going to be multiple choice, we just want to get the right basic idea down. Okay, and then the other function we have to graph here is y equals 3x squared. That's a parabola that's been stretched vertically by a factor of 3. Um, but again, because the, the y-axis is counting by so much, uh, this is going to look like a pretty wide parabola. It's going to be quite wide, so it'll look something like this. This is just a sketch, okay? It's just to get the right basic shape down. All right, and then what are we actually going to be using as our region of integration? Well, let me do that in blue. Our region of integration, we know starts at 1, ends at 5 on the x-axis. Um, so it's going to start right here at 1, and then it goes all the way up to 5. Um, and obviously, I might not be drawn to scale. It might not be a perfect picture. Um, but we do know that the integral goes all the way over here. Okay? Um, so on the x-axis, it's definitely going to be going that whole, that whole way. And then on the y-axis, it starts at y equals 3x squared, and then it ends at y equals 3x plus 60. So it's going to start on this bottom one. And it's going to end on the top one. So even though it might not be drawn to scale, this is a, a nice picture. This is a rough picture of our region of integration. Okay, so I'll, I'll shade that in, in in blue. Region of integration. I believe technically, if I look at my graphing calculator here, um, Technically, I think I counted too wide on the x-axis. So technically, on the x-axis, it should look a little bit more like um, 5 would be right here. Okay, but close enough, since it's multiple choice anyway. Okay. So I think I wanted to just do maybe one more of these. Um, again, you can use a graphing calculator. You can also use GeoGebra online. That's a nice online graphing calculator or Mathematica, Wolfram. Um, OK, so let's do one more of these. So for problem number two, for problem number two, we're going to sketch the described region of integration. And this one tells us that e to the x is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to e. Okay? And then 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. Okay? e to the x is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to e. And 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 1. Um, since x is only going from 0 to 1, we can have our x-axis be pretty far um, spread out. So like we might only count in 1s. Well, we definitely would only count in 1s. Um, Okay, and then we know that x is only going from 0 to 1, so that means it's going to start here, and then we'll say that this right here is 1. Okay, and then um, that's taking care of x, so we took care of x, 
And then to take care of y, we have two functions here. The first one is y equals e to the x. That's going to be our smaller function. And then our larger function is going to be y equals e. Okay. So y equals e is just going to be a constant, which is a horizontal line, because e is a constant. But y equals e to the x is what's called exponential growth. And I don't know if you remember the shape of this one, but maybe I can make my horizontal axis be a little bit, um, a little bit tighter here so we can see the shape. So the shape of um, e to the x is exponential growth. And here we're just going to do a sketch of it. Uh, the basic idea with e to the x is it starts out almost flat. It grows very slowly. Then it passes through 1, and then it starts to increase. So it might look something like that. Okay, and we know it passes through 1 on the y-axis. Okay, so that's actually 1 right there. Okay, and then um, to do the rest of our sketch, we know that we have to end at y equals e. Okay, so this one that I just sketched here was y equals e to the x. And then y equals e has to intersect e to the x when y gets to 1. Uh, I'm sorry, when, when x gets to 1, When x equals 1, e to the x equals e to the 1, which is e. Okay, so that means our, our other graph here, y equals e, is going to have to pass through right about there. And it's going to be a horizontal line because e is a constant. y equals e is just going to be a horizontal line. Okay, so uh, let me let me erase that a little bit. It looks a little confusing. So what we got here is this exponential growth is y equals e to the x, and then the horizontal line is y equals e. Okay, and then in our x-axis we know we go from zero to one, so from there to there. And then in blue I'll go ahead and highlight the region. So I know we start at at zero here and then we end at 1. Okay, and then for uh, for y, we know that y starts at e to the x, which is a smaller function, and then it ends at e, which is the larger function. Okay, so that right there, that blue region, is our region of integration. Region of integration. Cool, huh?